Houston, Texas, where the retractable roof of Minute Maid Park is closed. Coming up, we've got a good matchup in store between the Seattle Mariners and the Houston Astros. It'll be fun watching these two swing it all series long. First pitch is next. Colin McHugh gets the start for Houston in this one. What do we need to know here, E.K.? Remember, guys, this is someone that will come at you with four different pitches. He'll change velocity. He'll go up and down. The break on the pitches makes it a real challenge for a hitter. Nori Aoki strides forward, and we are set for baseball here this evening. Off for Seattle, the left fielder, number eight, Nori Aoki. And a cold strike on the game's first pitch as we bring you this one here tonight. Chop foul right at home plate. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. Yeah, that's the put away curveball. A great pitch with two strikes. You start it in the zone and then let it work out and see if he'll chase. And he's retired one away. And here's a look at the starting lineup for the visiting Seattle Mariners. Eric, who stands out to you? Well, guys, everybody should be looking out for that guy in the number three spot. He doesn't let the pressure of the big moment get to him. He knows how to stay within himself and come through in the clutch. Striding into the box, Kyle Seeger, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. And, oh, looked inside, but that's ruled as strike, nothing in one. And set up working the plate is Matthew Ross, as you see the rest of the umpiring crew there. And, you know, Ross is definitely liked by the pitchers now. When they're working both sides of the plate, they tend to be pretty effective when he's making the calls. Got him. With a moment now, let's call on a look at how the Astros line it up defensively. It's brought to us by Majestic. Eric, what do we need to know? Well, guys, this manager loves to do the defensive shifts. So we're going to see a lot of odd formations as the game goes along. I can't wait to see how it works. Nelson Cruz gets his first opportunity now in the top of the first with nobody on. Nope. Fastball too high to start him out here, 1-0. Oh. You got to figure that that man right there would be more than happy to see this guy at the plate taking his swings with two out and nobody on all night long. <laughs> so would the guy on the mound. One and two. Well, he's, he's a strike away now from going a strong one, two, three to start the ball game. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. Got him Three. looking, and that ends the inning. One, two, three, go the Mariners. Now the Astros will get their first opportunity. No, Taiwan Walker gets the starting nod for the M's. E.K., what do you got? Well, guys, he's been what you would call a fourth or fifth starter. Got a career ERA of over four, but he will give you innings and he is dependable. Here comes the second baseman, Jose Altuve, to get things kicked off in the home half of Leading inning number Astros. one. Second baseman, Jose Altuve. And he gets ahead here with the fastball, strike one. High pop up. Lind is there for it. One out. Time now for a quick look at the hometown Astros starting lineup. Anybody catch your eye, Eric? Well, you really have to appreciate what Jose Altuve brings to this team. He's one of the fastest guys in all of baseball, and his speed can be the difference maker. Having that kind of speed on the base paths is a huge headache for opposing pitchers. Hit sharply toward the right side. Solid base hit for him, his first of the afternoon. A pretty good swing there. You watch. Head stays down. Ball gets deep in the zone, and he lets those hands lead the way, and he drives it to right field. That's as good an approach as you're going to see.
Here's Carlos Correa now. As he'll take a look at a strike right down the middle. It's 0-1. Well, a very hittable pitch, too. That's a middle-of-the-plate fastball, and he's not going to get away with too many of those tonight. In the dirt, and now let's see. And forget about the double play now as he'll move up to second here on the wild pitch. And you wonder if sometimes he was just getting a little too preoccupied out there with the speed at first base, and he totally loses focus on the guy at the plate. And now that essentially is going to work like a stolen base, and he's in the scoring position now on the wild pitch. Down and away, it's a ball and two strikes. And even on one and two now, you've got to expand the strike zone a little up there. You can't go down looking here. You've got to put this ball in play. To two balls and two strikes now. Walker comes set. The 2-2 two -two pitch to third. Seeger has it. Throw on to first, two gone. And with that, let's take a look at how the Mariners will set up defensively. It's brought to us by Majestic. Eric? Well, guys, Kyle Seeger over at third base, one of the best all-around third basemen in the game. Remember, he was an all-star in 2014, also garnered a gold glove award at that position. He'll start him with a breaking ball. Too low that time. It's ball one. Swing. High drive. Deep down the left field line. This ball is slicing. And he pushed it just a bit too much. It'll wind up a foul ball. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a ball hit softly on the ground. And the pitcher will just run over and take this one himself, and the inning is over. One left for Houston. After one, no score. The second baseman, Robinson Cano, makes his way to the plate. He'll get us started here in the top of the second. McHugh sets his sights. Here's the delivery. Now a swing and a miss. Took something off that one, and it's strike one. Trying to jump on that first pitch changeup. That's a good pitch there to start this A-B. And this misses the outside corner, so it's knotted up at one and one. Baseball fans see Robinson Cano, and they think of his time with the Yankees and the Mariners, but some forget how great he was during the World Baseball Classic in 2013. He hit 469 for the undefeated Dominican team on his way to the tournament MVP award. And here's a swing and a miss by Cano as he set down on strikes, and there's one away. The third strikeout for him now. Got him out front a little bit here. He winds up turning this pitch over nicely, and he gets him to swing right through it. Here's Adam Lind. As he swings and misses at a first pitch fastball, 0-1. Living a little dangerously here. Yeah, you don't have to go looking for trouble. Trouble will find you if you're putting pitches there. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. And he got him. And remember now, he finished off the previous inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. And now he started this inning with two more. So he's really got it working out there now. Here's Seth Smith now. Broken bat as this ball's hit on the ground. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. He's safe. Well, that's just one of those fluky plays right there. He gets a late break off the mound because he's concerned about the business end of that bat, and who wouldn't be? And they wind up not being able to get an out on that play. Here's Leonis Martin. As he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. And you know, if you're going to challenge a guy up in the zone with a fastball, why not do it on the first pitch? A lot of times he's... And we'll have to leave it there as the play is made here to end the inning. Mariners leave one. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score.
Carlos Gomez will lead things off here as they'll have five, six, and seven due up to start the home second. Carlos Gomez. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And not the greatest of starts to the at-bat as he reaches for one out of the zone for strike one. Yeah, he really pulled off of that one, and that's not the kind of swing we're accustomed to seeing from a guy like him. Right, especially starting off an at-bat. Right over the top with that curveball, and it's 0-2. And, and a check swing here, but the bat clearly breaks the plane as he set down for the first out. Batting six. You know, it Batting seems like it every counts. time we check Evan. these out and show motion, it always looks like the bat breaks the plane. Look here, sure enough, I don't think he holds up in time. It looked to me like that was the right call. Evan Gaddis now standing in. As he'll go after the first pitch to him and comes up empty, it's strike one. Bottom of the second here with no score. Gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. And another foul ball. Swung on, and he went fishing in the dirt. And he makes the throw to first. Gaddis is retired, two down now. Batting seven, third baseman, Luis, Luis Valbuena, Valbuena stands in, looking to put the bat on the ball for a change here, with the first two guys going down on strikes to start the inning. A fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. High and deep to right center field. Back goes Smith. Out of here. She was a wall scraper, but it counts just the same. A home run. Solo shot to right center. And the Astros take a one to nothing lead. doubt that's a mistaken location right there at the plate his eyes were probably lighting up watching that one come in. here's the big first baseman John Singleton uh, couldn't hold up on the curveball there as he went around for strike one And it's quickly 0 2. Bases are empty here with two men out. Here's a high pop up. Seeger is there for it. He makes the play, and that'll end the inning. Astros off and running on the solo homer. We've played two. It's now 1 0 Houston. Leading off the inning. Chris Iannetta as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. McHugh gets the sign. Here's the first pitch. And they start him out away with a cold strike. And Iannetta can't come up with that one as he swings through it for strike two now. And this is swung on and missed. Five quick strikeouts now and that's your first out of the inning. Let's get in tight to take a look at the grip there on that last curveball. You can see by his fingers, this is going to be more of an overhand curve. And he'll just sort of pull down on it like he's pulling down a curtain. Standing in now, Cattel Marte drops one down here and he'll try to beat it out. Valbuena gloves it on to first as the throw takes care of him and it's a quick two up, two down start to the third. Yeah, the third baseman's playing back right here. It was almost like he was daring him to bunt. So he had to charge a long way to come in and get this thing. But he manages to come in, get the throw off, and get his man at first. Into the windup and the pitch. Nori Aoki will stand in for the second time as he watches one miss low. It's a ball and no strikes. In there, one and one.
swing and a little tapper. That winds up foul for the second strike. Two out, nobody on. And this one's tapped foul at home plate. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. Yeah, and on one and two, when you... And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. Mariners are down in order. They trail this one one to nothing. Jason Castro digs into the box in the bottom of inning number three. Catcher, Jason Castro. And a check swing here, but he clearly went around on a pitch that would have been a strike anyway. It's nothing in one. Hit hard towards center. And that's a base hit, so the pressure's on to open up the inning. Oh, and he botches it. As we look at that again, you know, this is not a bad pitch by any stretch. If he throws this pitch ten times, I bet he gets him out nine of them. But here you just have to tip your cap to the guy at the plate. So it's back to the top of the order now. And striding in the speedy second baseman, Jose Altuve. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. High in the air out to center field. Martin is under it. One down. George Springer will dig in. He singled his first time around. George Springer. Takes this the other way to right. Oh, and he can't come up with it. The relay. And he is in there. So problems out there in right field is this is going to wind up going as an E9. Carlos Correa comes forward looking to add to this early lead as he'll bat with a couple of guys in scoring position. And you know one man who'd love for him to come through big time right here is his pitcher. We'll see if he can get it done. A splitter, but he started it too low as it bounces up to the plate. Mm. Just did manage to catch that one with the last two inches of his glove. That could have been trouble. And he won't bite at that one either. It's 2-0. Oh. Two times here they've gone away. Both pretty easy takes. And as a hitter, now I'm thinking it might be time they try to bust something inside. Swing and a miss, two and one. Well, and he's got a great splitter. You're talking 88 miles an hour. You think you can hit it, but it just disappears on you. Right side. Cano has it. Only play is going to be the first, so score it as an RBI ground out as the lead moves to two to nothing now. Yeah, and unless he was going on his own down there at third, they were using that contact play where you're told wherever and whenever the ball's hit, you're off and running. You're not even paying attention to what's going on. You've got to go. They love to play an aggressive style on the bases, and it gets them a run right there. Stepping in now, Colby Rasmus. Swing, and he pops him up over toward foul territory. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. 0-1, oh, here's the pitch. Nope. Off the plate, ball. one ball, one strike. Two and one. All the way here to start the at-bat. And that's fine, but you can't be afraid to work inside. You can jam this guy. Get him to roll over something. You don't have to strike him out. Chops it foul at home plate as the count moves to two and two now. Now a check swing, but that's in there for strike three anyway, and the inning is over.